Hello, I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. Today, we're going to meet three friends at Ames High School in Iowa that are collaborating on film projects, a public service announcement, and a documentary that target some of the problems their generation are going to face. With a little help from Iowa State University, these young Iowans are changing the world. First, let's meet Sherry Hernandez from Iowa State University and Project Stomp, and then our filmmakers from Ames High School, Camden, Jason, and Adrian. Sherry, welcome to the show. Give us a little background on how Iowa State builds these collaborations and sort of what you're looking for when you start these things off. Great, thank you, Peter. Thank you for having us on. Um, <clears throat> Lights, Camera Prevention is a project that the Project Stomp team um, kind of just came up with. Um, Project STOMP stands for Steps Toward Opioid Misuse Prevention, and we are grant funded. And our, uh, our supervisor said, hey, we need to come up with a project, a project for uh, students, and we need to uh, have it be about substance misuse prevention. How are we gonna do that? So our team came together and we brainstormed and we brainstormed and the brainstorm process is so important. So we came back and we said, how about a PSA, uh, how about a PSA contest? And uh, so one thing led to another and uh, this is what we came up with. Our team rolled it out. And one of the reasons we knew this was so important is because there's fabulous research that says when teens teach other teens, about important issues like substance misuse, the message has a much greater chance to stick than say if I were to make a, a public service announcement, you know, mine would be good for my peers and my colleagues, but I might miss the mark with a high school student or a middle school student. But when we can have peers teaching other peers, that message, that message has a, a much greater chance to to be meaningful to these, um, to, to our students today. So that's what we did. The, the process um, started from ground zero to like, well, here's what a public service announcement is. Uh, we took it to, to how to produce them, gave them some examples of public service announcements, but then it didn't start, it just, it didn't start just there. We had to go into what, um, what the brain science was and what actually happens uh, to the brain when somebody gets addicted and when a teen gets addicted and why it's so dangerous to start uh, drinking or, or dabbling in things that are unsafe at such an early age because um, it, it can do much more severe damage to a teenager, of course, we know, than it can an adult. So um, they, had to, to, they had to learn how to do a little research. They learned digital citizenship. From there, they got to go into the production end of things. You know, how to, how to write a public service announcement for radio, how to write one for television, and, and why every single word matters when you only have 60 seconds, right, guys? Uh, so, so they had to be really, really careful with their words. They had to use research, and then they had to come up with a product. And um, we were, we were so excited with the, with the project. We rolled it out. And we had some amazing submissions from that. You know, these are great points. So now, Adrian, you guys have sat there patiently. You know, you're living in a world where there's a lot of people, you know, like gray hairs like me talking at you, trying to tell you stuff. But, but obviously in this project, you sort of saw some initiatives that you felt were important. Adrian, starting with you, what were some of your first thoughts when this project first became an idea in your mind and something that your friends shared? So when we first started off, we shared a common um, goal in advocating for these issues amongst our peers in our own high school with um, our peers going out to parties, dabbling in alcohol, maybe testing the waters a little bit with different drugs. But overall, we just wanted to um, share our worth of advocacy and uh, talking about the issues in our own localized communities. Well, yeah, and it is one thing that we do know when we look at uh, youth empowerment, let's call it that for sake of simplicity, is that the majority of the kids your age, you know, sophomores, juniors, seniors in high school are 
not doing drugs or alcohol and tobacco. So it really becomes sort of like a social movement for you to say, hey, we want to help that sort of minority group of students that maybe feel some stresses. In, in the practical sense, do you get a feeling that this is like a need that really is powerful and that it can cross some barriers to do some of these projects with kids? Well, of course, it's it's different when someone, as you may have described as white haired, maybe a little bit older, as them talking to these students. And there's really not that connection that you might get from a student to student interaction with really talking to them about um, the issues with alcohol and starting that journey down that path. Um, just having that different perspective coming from a student that has the same connections that they may have. That's the most important thing we see. All right, we're going to take a short break, and afterwards, you know, we'll continue this conversation and give Jason and Camden a chance to talk, too. We'll see you all after the break. You don't want to miss this. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity, and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice kid. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and we're talking with Sherry from Iowa State, Camden, Jason, and Adrian from Ames High School. And we're talking about the importance of doing your part to make the world a better place. They're working on some great film projects to share some insight on some of the risks kids face today. Um, and, and we're getting a chance to get a, a view of the world from their point of view. Jason, you've had this unique sort of aspect of working internationally as well. Tell us a little bit about what you've been involved with on this project. Um, so I took a short trip to Korea, so I wasn't really able to do stuff in person in Ames with um, my peers. So I wasn't able to film like in person with them and stuff, but I was able to be, I was able to get engaged in the um, digital parts, like doing animation and editing and stuff, and also planning out the the scripts for the document, uh, the PSA. Yeah. So we're connected sort of globally now, really well. That's one of the great things, the great tools that we're sort of seeing an empowerment for kids. What about the value of these messages looking at places like Korea? I mean, is are there issues there just, just as they are here with things like alcohol abuse? So um, alcohol, it's a common thing in Korea too, because um, a lot of teenagers also start doing alcohol during um, their high school. And um, alcohol is also a big tradition in Korea that you always, um, you know, drink a lot with your family when you get older and stuff. So, but sometimes it's misused a lot and it could bring you to a bad path, I guess. So yeah, this um, this prevention video could also be used in different cases in the world too, I guess. Now, Camden, you've got a perspective that's unique too on this project. Tell us about how you got involved and some of your thoughts about its importance. Yeah, so, uh, you know, one day uh, Adrian, who had the idea originally contacted me and he was like, hey, I heard about this PSA contest, would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, of course. Um, I'm really interested in photography and filmmaking, especially. Um, so, at, you know, 
immediately I was interested, but then the content itself and you know the reason, the deeper meaning behind the PSA really got me locked in, you know, making a difference in your community and helping out people that really need it, spreading a good message. It was the opportunity that I needed. Uh, Adrian, for you, maybe, did you get a chance to sort of build some celebrity with your classmates and schoolmates when they're out there seeing you working on this? Sort of, what was the reaction of a lot of them to you working on this project? Well, of course, we we, we shared it to our, all our social media, so people started catching on that we were the local celebrities around town. But honestly, when we walked around school, we would we would get comments like, "Oh." You, you were, the, you were the guy on the uh, PSA, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, uh, the the teacher in that PSA as well brought us a lot of um, uh, attention because he was such a notable um, teacher at our school. But um, we got uh, over 100, 500 views on that uh, video. So a lot of people saw it from our school and our community. And we, we overall just appreciated the attention. <laughs> Well, just to give our viewers a chance of what all that attention was about, we're going to cut out to show the PSA. Everybody get a chance to see it, and then we'll go to break afterwards. What's up? Come on, bro. Where are you? You can go to a party. Someone's like your drinks, by the way. <laughs> see you there, bro. Where are you headed, son? I'm just heading to a party. Going drinking? Maybe. Let me tell you something, son. I've been down that road once. DUI for drunk driving. Got my buddy killed. All because of peer pressure. Okay, well, go on then. It's your life. It's your choice. After a short break, we'll continue our conversation and get a closer look at some of the ideas and challenges these young filmmakers experience in the process of creating their messages. See you after the break. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared and you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> you told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking with a group of high school students that are passionate about filmmaking and making the world a better place. And they're facing a reality that many of us as adults wish we had helped our children be better prepared for. You know, this is sort of a deep question for you guys, and I don't know who wants to step up, but for many of us as adults, we recognize we have not prepared you for these problems. And, and yeah, we can talk about it's great to have peer-to-peer -peer messages, but these are reactions to problems that somehow have slipped past sort of the 
supervision that we would like to have had in terms of keeping your world safe. How do you look at the risks and, and assess sort of what the world in the future looks like for you in that context? Well, you know, from a young age, I feel like we've actually had pretty good um, drug prevention education. Um, at least personally, at my elementary school, a lot of the teachers were really into Red Ribbon Week and, um, you know, YSS, um, things like that. Um, so it, it's something that we've been taught about, but um, sort of in a, in a formal way that's hard to um, apply to maybe when you would actually need it. Because you know, at, at that age, it's really just abstract. But once you get to high school and places where you actually need it, there's a bit less talk about it because it's an uncomfortable conversation, and um, it's just difficult to. Okay, I get that. And Jason, do you do you sometimes when you sit around with your friends look around and go, "Boy, what have these adults done to our world?" <laughs> Yeah, like when I see some kids um, choosing a wrong path, I guess, you know, getting their hands on some um, unwanted, you know, some drugs or, you know, things, I kind of think, you know, how could have they gotten them and like, you know, what the world we're living in has made us get um, get our hands onto that, right? So I think it would be better if we are a like, you know, in a bigger, a great, um, like a better protection of not of getting safe yet. Yeah, you know, and, and Adrian, we talked about this. You guys also have another great project coming up, which I can see doing another show on a documentary doing on the opioid epidemic in rural Iowa, which we're all really excited to see when it's done. Um, but this is a big responsibility falling on the shoulders of, of kids that, you know, God, it, it seems like so wrong that you have to be doing these things, that you can't be moving out of building the world a better place as opposed to fixing the flaws in the world that we're handing you. How do you feel about that? Well, we feel proud of what we're doing, obviously. With with what we're trying to do, we're just trying to make the world a better place to be in, spread awareness for these issues that overall were brought up by Project Stomp with their overall message of um, steps to towards uh, opioid misuse prevention. Um, just heading in that direction of really raising awareness, spreading information, and expo not exposing, but showing the truth of some of these stories and some of the accounts of the opioid epidemic really would be beneficial to our community. Yeah, and uh, you know, a little, I mean, all truth be told, you guys did interview me as well because I've had a lot of experience talking about the epidemic around Iowa, but I was really impressed by the questions you asked and the way you're looking at the world. Um, you all have active lives in school. You play sports, you do other things. When I was growing up, there wasn't a component that was about fixing the world. <laughs> we could just have fun and go to school and do our homework. And, and nobody was really saying, what are you gonna do to make the world a better place? And for years, I've heard youth in schools at, at job fairs talk about, I wanna go out and change the world. I wanna make the world a better place. Is this something that you're seeing as a strong movement amongst your peers and other students? I personally don't think that's what's happening right now. With my peers and I'm with talking to them, they really don't seem like they're looking forward into other people's problems or other things that are surrounding them in their communities. And they're really focusing on their own little bubble. And what we're trying to do with our project is maybe show them that they can do something else and that they are able to benefit their community and spread awareness for an issue that is a prevalent problem in their community. Those are great, great points. Well, we're gonna take another short break and afterwards we'd like to invite you all to share some comments and insights, things you've gained from this experience you might wanna share with other people that may not show up on film. Stay tuned, we'll see you all after the break. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it with one of the nation's first 10G platforms. 
we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Right now, millions of people and billions of devices are connected to the internet. Homes, businesses, hospitals, schools. The security and reliability of these connections are more important than ever. That's why at Mediacom, we've built a network to protect them. A network that sees threats, fixes problems before they occur, and keeps you going with 99.99% network reliability. Welcome back. Today on Surviving Bad, we're talking about how young Iowans view the world they are inheriting, what problems they think are most important to address, and the hopes they have for the future. Let's hear a little bit about what our guests have to say about these exciting projects they're working on. Sherry, starting with you, you've listened to them throughout the show, you've known these kids. Give us a little bit of a feeling about what you feel this project means to our community and to the world at large. Yeah. Um, our. Our group has been so um, just uh, so impressed with the quality of work that these high schoolers have done. When we rolled out the project, you know, we don't really know who's going to who's going to enter the contest. And when I first got an email from Adrian saying, "Hey, we'd like to participate," great, you know, I was I was excited, and um, they just really took the ball and ran with it you know they had guidelines to follow and they they met them we had to do this so that it could be done virtually and boy did they ever mean virtually since we had somebody <laughs> zoom in from korea with us um so they just really took this project and ran with it they absolutely ran with it and um our group was blown away by their professionalism and their message and now with their documentary and this was the ideal group to do this project and we could not be more excited and you know what our the next generation i'm excited because they're going to be doing good things and these are three young men who are a great example of what's coming up excellent thank you very much now camden you've had some stories to share about real world problems you guys had. I mean, when you got into this, it became a production business and you had to meet some challenges and overcome some obstacles. Oh yeah, for sure. This production was not a cakewalk by any means. We, we really wanted it and, and we had to push through plenty of barriers to get it. Um, for example, we went out one day to film this um, we had a microphone that went on the top of our camera and there's an on and off switch. Turns out it just happened to be off the entire time that we were filming. And when we got back to uh, watch the video back, <laughs> we realized we're gonna have to film it again. So we got a little more practice and the second time we think uh, looks a bit better anyway. So uh, we're glad it happened. It was for the better, you know, learning experiences as they say, but that certainly wasn't the only difficulty we faced. I mean, uh, Jason here was in Korea for most of the time. Yeah, one major um, difficulty that we had was the time difference. Obviously, um, since there's a 15 hour time difference between Korea and um, America, um, either I had to stay up or Kendon and Adrian had to stay up. So we had to find a good time that we could communicate to each other. But yeah, that was about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really fascinating because I think that the ability of, of media, even social media, to transcend these huge time differences connects people in a whole new way. You know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, it would have been impossible through normal channels to do that. You'd be trading not even emails. It would have been hard mail. <laughs> and so this is just a fascinating time for you guys to be working in, and you're meeting the challenge of these productions at the highest level. You know, Adrian, what are some of your thoughts about this and the goals? That, you know, where do you go from here? Well, with 
the youth being the future of this world and of tomorrow, we we just want to show that our peers and the youth around the world, if we could, um, that it is possible to make change in the community. It is possible to take initiatives to do things that might not seem possible, but are possible for everyone and just make a change in the community for the better. What do you believe the value of, of people taking that PSA and sharing it is? If our PSA can make some difference in someone's lives, if that word alcohol or if that word opioid could be in their minds with the next time they experience or are in the presence of these things, that's what we want them to think of, of our PSA and what we're trying to say. And maybe that'll change their mind. They'll be like, oh, maybe I don't want to do this or I don't want to try this. And they'll move away and avoid those consequences that will affect them later in life. And that aspect you were talking about of, of sharing it with other people and, you know, if you see it, let somebody else know like, hey, I saw this. That's the most important thing possible because as we've been talking about, peer-to-peer -peer, um, conversations are really the biggest factor in changing some of these things that we want to see change in. Now, from for people that aren't going to be making films, that aren't going to be as technologically adept, if they want to make a difference in the world, what have you learned might be good ways for them to do that? Um, the biggest thing is, I think, um, spreading words of your thoughts. Um, if you think something is bad, you think, um, I think that you have to actually say that and convey it to people so that they could actually take action and make a difference in their lives. Yeah. You know, it's a great note on which to end this experience of having you on the show. Thank you so very much. I'm so proud of you guys as well. I can't wait to see the documentary and the PSA is awesome. Keep up the good work. And just like all seeds that we plant of compassion and caring, your work is going to spread a long way. We don't know how far, but if you do it, good things will happen. And I thank you for doing it. And thank you all for joining us today. Check out our website, ahealthyiowa.org, for more information about these young filmmakers and other projects. And keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration on Mediacom MC22, your local programming leader. <laughs>